Well, let's begin with what we have, who we have. So let's open with a word of prayer. Okay. Father, thank you again for allowing us to be here together this evening to pray. Thank you, Father, for always being attentive to our prayers and desiring to hear from us. And so, Father, as we go into this time, help us to calm our hearts and minds as we come before your throne. Help us, O God, to come before your throne with thanksgiving and with certainty and with confidence because we know that you are a sovereign God who controls all things. So, Father, bless this evening, and for any that may be in traveling on their way here, bring them in safely. And then use this prayer time, Father, for your honor and your glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. So we stand as we sing. As I come into your presence, past the gates of praise, into your sanctuary, till we're standing face to face. I look upon your countenance, I see the fullness of your grace. I can only bow down and say, you are awesome in this place, mighty God, you are awesome in this place, Abba Father, you are worthy of all praise, to you our lives we raise, you are awesome in this place, mighty God. As I come into your presence, past the gates of praise, into your sanctuary till we're standing face to face i look upon your countenance i see the fullness of your grace i can only bow down and say you are awesome in this place mighty god you are awesome in this place Abba Father, you are worthy of all praise, to you our lives we raise, you are awesome in this place, mighty God, you are awesome in this place, mighty God, you are awesome in this place, Abba Father. You are worthy of all praise, to you our lives we raise. You are awesome in this place, mighty God. Tell it to Jesus, tell it to Jesus. Are you grieving over joys departed? Tell it to Jesus alone. Tell it to Jesus, tell it to Jesus. He is a friend that's well known. You've no other such a friend or brother tell it to Jesus alone do the tears flow down your cheeks unbidden tell it to Jesus tell it to Jesus do tell it to Jesus alone tell it to Jesus Tell it to Jesus, he is a friend that's well known. You've no other 
such a friend or brother, tell it to Jesus alone. Do you fear the gathering clouds of sorrow? Tell it to Jesus, tell it to Jesus. Are you anxious? What shall be tomorrow? Tell it to Jesus alone. Tell it to Jesus, tell it to Jesus, he is a friend that's well known. You've no other such a friend or brother, tell it to Jesus alone. Are you troubled at the thoughts of dying? Tell it to Jesus, tell it to Jesus. For Christ's coming kingdom are you signing? Tell it to Jesus alone. Tell it to Jesus, tell it to Jesus. He is a friend that's well known. You've no other such a friend or brother. Tell it to Jesus alone. Speak to my heart, Lord Jesus, speak that my soul may hear. Speak to my heart, Lord Jesus, calm every doubt and fear. Speak to my heart, oh speak to my heart, speak to my heart, I pray. Yielded and still, seeking thy will, oh speak to my heart today. Speak to my heart, Lord Jesus. Purge me from every sin. Speak to my heart, Lord Jesus. Help me the lost to win. Speak to my heart, oh speak to my heart. Speak to my heart, I pray. Yielded and still, seeking thy will, oh, speak to my heart today. Speak to my heart, Lord Jesus, it is no longer mine. Speak to my heart, Lord Jesus, I would be wholly thine. Speak to my heart, oh speak to my heart, speak to my heart, I pray. Yielded and still, seeking thy will, oh speak to my heart today. Let's uh, read from Philippians chapter 4. If you have your Bible there, please. Filipenses 4, Philippians chapter 4. And I'm going to read uh, verses uh, 2 through 7. Capitulo 4, 2 al 7. I don't have a Spanish version with me here, so I'm just going to read it in English. Philippians chapter four, verse, verse uh, chapter four, verses two to seven. And I plead with Aodia, and I plead with Syntyche, to agree with each other in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you, loyal yoke fellow, help these women who have contended at my side in the cause of the gospel, along with Clement 
and the rest of my fellow workers whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you, Father, for these uh, exhortations. Thank you, Father, for these promises. Thank you, Father, for the gift of prayer. And thank you, Father, that in you uh, we can find peace, uh, free of anxiety, by trusting in you. So this evening as we pray, Father, give us wisdom to understand and to apply and to uh, sense your presence in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. I'm just going to share for a, a few minutes here, very, very short, some thoughts about prayer. And uh, it's hard to teach anything new about prayer. Everybody pretty much has heard a lot about it and knows about it. But I'm convinced that for, for many of us as Christians, prayer sometimes can be a challenge. Prayer can be an enigma. Prayer can be a puzzle. In other words, how do you pray? When do you pray? How often do you pray? How long do you pray? What do you pray for? And to be consistent about that day after day. And for a lot of Christians, that's, that's hard. Now, I don't think there's any serious Christian who would deny uh, that prayer is important, who would, de who would deny that uh, heartfelt prayer is important. All of us would, any serious Christian would. But many of us don't prove what we believe because we don't pray often. Uh, we, 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 we don't look at it as something that's a priority daily in our lives. This is a strange time we're living in right now. So, so it's a lousy ex example to say, well, look how many of us are here, how few are here tonight. Well, there's a lot of stuff going on as well. We know that. But even, you know, during healthy times, uh, we don't fill this church on a Wednesday night for prayer. Uh, now, there's a lot of, maybe there's some that are good reason for that, and I'm not up here to be critical. I don't want to do that because I can't know anybody's heart and life. Uh, but I, and I do know that, you know, some have excuses, maybe working, uh, small children and not having a place to put them and they come, pandemic, all these things, okay, are, are reasonable. But, but if people really wanted to, they'd be here. And that's really the way it is. And so, you know, we, we have to understand that, that importance. Um, but again, I don't want to criticize, not my point, just to encourage us to consider how important it is. If memory serves me right, and I tried to find out, I didn't have time to count it, but if memory serves me right, in the Gospels we've got between 15 and 17 occasions of Jesus setting, aside a time, setting time aside to pray. Now, if Jesus set that much time apart to pray, whether it was all night long, which he did, early in the morning, which he did, at various times, which he did, if he did it, stands to reason we'd better. And it stands to reason it's important for us, too. Prayer is a lifeline. Prayer is important. He needed that communication with his Father. He needed wisdom uh, to, under, to make decisions, uh, to, uh, uh, to, to assure, to get assurance from his God, to simply communicate with his God. And he, he needed that. Uh, as, as, as a human, he needed that. And as part of the Trinity, he needed that. And so I think we obviously need that as well. So whether or not prayer is important should never be a question for any Christian. The question has to be, are you sold out to the importance of prayer? Do you recognize the importance of prayer? Do we recognize it? Is prayer a quick thing you do when you got a minute? Or is prayer something you do consistently, constantly, in a specified time? Is your prayer just random? Or do you use a list? Do you accompany that with scripture reading? Do you try to understand or learn something new from the word of God on a daily basis? These are all things, if we're going to grow in Christ, we need to be doing. Prayer has to be a vital part of who we are. And, I, and I'm, I'm the first, I don't know about your prayer lives, I, I really don't. Um, I struggle with that sometimes. Sometimes I feel pressure of having to get something done. I got to get this done today, and I got to get up early, and I got to get going at it. You know, and, and I stop and think, wait, but I better pray first. 
and, and make sure that time is there. So I feel the pressure sometimes to say, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll pray double tomorrow or something. Uh, I don't take it that lightly, but sometimes that happens when you get busy. The point is, though, if we understand the value of prayer, we need to be constant about it. We need to make that a daily habit because that's our lifeline to the Lord. Now, in this passage, real briefly, normally when we look at Philippians chapter 4, we focus on verse 6 and 7, and so we should. Uh, you know, where it says, Do not be anxious for anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Make your request be made known unto God, and the peace of God which passes all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. That was one of the first verses I memorized when I became a Christian, because I tend to be shaky sometimes and anxious. And so I thought, I better make this part of my, my, my memory, and I did. And it has been a blessing. But there's a little more when you go back to verse 2 because there's some ingredients and th- some things we need to do before we go into that time of prayer and some things we have to have as part of that prayer. Notice in verse 2 where he says he pleads with these two ladies to agree with each other. Uh, that's an idea of being unified. And Paul is saying you've got to be unified. Not uniform, but you've got to be unified in the church. Work things out together. Be unified. And then he says, yes, and I ask you, loyal, loyal yoke fellow, help these women who have contended at my, in my, at my side in the cause of the gospel. Be supportive. Or to be unified, be supportive. There are people in the church that need our encouragement, that need our support. Maybe not because there's conflict that they're having between each other, but maybe there's issues going on in their personal lives that they're struggling with. And because they're struggling with that, they need support, our prayer support, a pat on the back, a hug, even during pandemic, so that people understand we're supportive, we care. Be unified, be supportive, Paul says. And he goes on in verse 5, no, in verse 5, verse 4, he says, rejoice in the Lord always. I'll say it again, rejoice, be joyful, be unified, be supportive, be joyful. And in verse 5, he does say, let your gentleness be evident to all. Be gentle. Just some quick exhortations right here in in a few verses. Be be unified, be supportive, be joyful, be gentle. And then he says what? The Lord is near. Be expectant. Be expectant. That's part of the joy part. The Lord's coming soon. So we need to have that expectation. So Paul encourages us in this In verses 2 to to 5, to be unified, be supportive, be joyful, be gentle, be expectant. How do we do all that? How do we do it? That's where verse 6 and 7 come in. Don't be anxious. That's the only don't here, the only negative part. Be all these other things, but don't be anxious. But in everything by prayer and, and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. With prayer, petition, thanksgiving as a common consistent part of our lives. So if we do that, if we strive to be unified, we strive to be supportive, we strive to be joyful, we strive to be gentle, we strive to be expectant, we don't get anxious because we take all our needs to the Lord in prayer. And as long as we're trusting him, the joy comes, the peace can come. And it's not, you know, I I realize that we live in times, uh, there's an awful lot of uncertainty an awful lot of anger out there, an awful lot of vitriol out there, all kinds of that stuff. And that, that stuff can really be aggravating. Uh, I was sharing I, last Sunday or another time about how I need to wean myself off of news, not watch the news anymore. It could be very depressing. Uh, you know, but we still have a sovereign God. And when he says, don't be anxious, that doesn't change. It doesn't matter what's going on around us. Don't be anxious. But come to him with prayer, petition, thanksgiving. And the result? Peace of God. If we are willing to lay down our lives to him, if we are real, willing to work at being unified, supportive, expectant, joyful, gentle, if we, if we go to him with prayer, ex- expecting answers, with thanksgiving, we can have a profound joy that the world just doesn't have that others don't have. Those without Christ don't have. And we have that option ourselves. I want to read something from you that I read in the Believer's Bible. I thought it was kind of
kind of in in interesting the way they put it. Um, he says, is it really possible for a Christian to be anxious for nothing? It is possible, as long as we have the resource of believing prayer. The rest of the verse goes on to explain how our lives can be free from sinful fretting, anxiety. Everything should be taken to the Lord in prayer. Everything means everything. There is nothing too great or small for his loving care. Prayer is two things. It's an act, according to the commentary, and an atmosphere. We come to the Lord at specific times and we bring specific requests for him. That's our action. We go and present these things. But it's also possible to live in an atmosphere of prayer. What he means by that, it is possible that the mood of our life should be a prayerful mood. Perhaps the word prayer in these verses signifies the overall attitude of our life, that we go daily communicating with God, and that prayer doesn't have to be just that moment when you kneel uh, in front of your Bible and you pray in the morning. It's a, it's a consistent communication with God all day all throughout our work day, throughout our lives. And supplication signifies the specific requests which we bring to the Lord. But then we should notice that our requests should be made known to God with thanksgiving, always with thanksgiving. God may not answer the request, and I've had many requests that has taken forever to be answered or not to be answered the way I want them. But he will answer in his time when he wants this week we've seen a great answer to prayer with, uh, with Sammy. He's back home. And I know that Nilsa was very concerned about him. And it was, uh, it, it was kind of a delicate thing. He's home. Praise God for that answer to prayer. And we know on the other hand there are those we've been praying for that have been ill and continue to be ill and not getting any better. You know, I, talk, I just left Sonia's house. And uh, things aren't getting better. You know, and, and yet there's a lot of prayer going into that as well. But that's not because God isn't listening. It's because God has a different plan. And his plan is right. And we submit to that. But he does say, finish it up, he says, um, someone has summarized the, this verse, Philippians 4, 6, and 7, as saying that we should be anxious in nothing, prayerful in everything, thankful for anything. Anxious in nothing, prayerful in everything, thankful for for anything, whatever way God chooses to act.